Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Hilary Booth and I'm a naturopathic doctor and welcome to my video blog. Before we get started today, I just want to remind you that I am still offering my free health seminars. So the way this works is I will come to your office, your meeting location for your book club or church group or whatever it is, and I will do a short presentation on the topic of your choosing. So I can help you choose this topic if you like, and this uh, presentation can be something that's very casual and short, or it could be something that's more formal and, or long, depending on what suits your needs best. So if you're interested in that or want to hear more information about it, you can give us an email and or you can call our office and I'd be happy to help you with that. Now today, I want to talk about this, something that happens to a lot of us and we don't typically think of it as something that's going awry in our bodies. It's that feeling of two or three o'clock in the afternoon, you just hit a wall. You're you know, you just get really tired and bogged down, your energy level just tanks, and um, you lose the ability to concentrate, and your work productivity just slows to a halt. Now, usually at this time, a lot of people will get up and go for a coffee break. They might grab, they're probably craving something to eat, so they might grab something sweet, like a cookie or a chocolate bar or something along those lines, and that actually allows them to get back to work and be productive for the rest of their day. But today I want to share with you some reasons why this might be happening and give you some really usable techniques that you can use in order to prevent you from hitting this awful wall of losing your energy in the middle of the day. So my first reason that this happens to a lot of people is that they ate a gigantic lunch. Now our nervous system is designed to be in either one of two states. The first one is called sympathetic nervous system state and that's your fight or flight. This is your you're working hard, your energy productivity levels are high, this is your I'm running from a lion, um, you are working out, these kinds of things. Your parasympathetic nervous system is your rest and digest um, actions in your body going on. Now this basically literally is exactly what it sounds like, you're sitting, you're relaxing, and you're digesting your food. Now they can't happen at the same time, especially if you eat a really large meal. You know, small snacks you may be able to kind of mitigate through this, but if you eat a really large meal, your body is going to need to be in that rest and digest mode, and it's going to prevent you from being in that um, sort of more product, productive, higher energy state. Now, my um, the reason that this often happens and people eat a really big lunch is usually they either skip breakfast altogether, which obviously is a no-no, um, but they or they are not having a good quality breakfast. So something I would consider a poor quality breakfast would be something like a piece of toast with jam or um, a piece of fruit or a bowl of cereal with milk. Now, all these types of breakfasts are very low in protein and in good fats and in fiber, and they're really high in carbohydrates and sugar. Sugar and carbohydrates, your body sees them as the same thing, so please consider those to be the same when we're talking. So um, the solution to this is either to, to just not let yourself get starving before lunchtime. You know, not eating breakfast or not eating a quality breakfast uh, makes it so that you're so, 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 so hungry by the time you can go for lunch that you're just eating and eating and eating to try and deal with that hunger and you're not listening to your body signals about what is too much to be eating at lunch. So um, we want to try and have a really well-balanced breakfast and this includes having good sources of fat and protein and fiber in your breakfast. So simple ways that we can do this, you can add um, hemp or chia or flax seeds to your cereal or your porridge or sprinkle it on your toast, that can help. My ideal, my number one best way to have a well-balanced breakfast that's going to last you and keep you full all the way through till lunch or at least keep you through and have some healthy snacks before lunchtime so you're not starving by lunch um, is a protein shake. Now you can watch my video on protein shakes. Um, it's called the Scoop on Protein Powder and this video is going to give you a lot of information but just a quick little thing. Um, you want that um, smoothie to have a protein powder in it that's really, really important to keep you feeling fuller for longer. You also want to have some fiber in it, so something like some vegetables would be fantastic. And you want to have a good source of fat in it. For example, uh, I just put some coconut oil in mine, and that's all you need. Just about a tablespoon of coconut oil is going to really help keep you full for longer. Um, other things that you can do are add chia, hemp, and flax seeds into your smoothie. You don't even know they're there, and they're going to be great for you for a whole other bunch of reasons, but they're going to also keep you fuller for longer. 
The other thing is you can do is have a nice snack between breakfast and lunch. A lot of people don't do the morning snack thing. Um, we don't think about our hunger until we're absolutely starving and it's time to head out for lunch. So um, even something small like a handful of almonds is all you need to, you don't have to fill yourself up, you just have to have a little bit of something to keep that blood sugar stable and to keep you feeling um, a little bit fuller for longer so you don't have to have that huge, huge lunch. My second reason that a lot of people get this wall at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon is that they're having gluten at their lunch. So a lot of people are sensitive to gluten and it can affect people in a lot of different ways. Now one of the most common th things that I see with people who have sensitivities to gluten um, is that they have fatigue and low energy. Um, they also might, I mean there's often some digestive concerns there, but you don't necessarily need the digestive issues in order to have some, um, some problems with gluten. Now, you can watch my video about going gluten-free for more information about how to do this, um, but what I would recommend is just doing a trial of three lunches this week. Just take three lunches and three in a row and have gluten-free lunches and see how you feel at two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Are you still hitting that wall? Are you still feeling exhausted? And if you're not, then taking gluten out of your, out of your um, diet entirely would be wonderful, but at least out of your lunch in order to help prevent that wall from uh, from coming down when at 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon when that gluten is in your system. Um, my third reason that a lot of people experience this wall is that you spiked your blood sugar up too much at lunch. Now your blood sugar, basically we want it to be pretty stable throughout the day. If you have some um, as we were talking about before, carbs and sugar, what's going to happen is your stomach is going to digest it really quickly. It's a really, really effective um, way of actually getting food into you, <laughs> eating carbs and sugar, because it gets absorbed super fast from the stomach and the intestinal tract and into the bloodstream. Now when that gets absorbed into the bloodstream, um, it's going to spike up your blood sugar levels. Now the reason um, that this is even worse is the carbs and sugar get digested really quickly, they get absorbed really quickly, and then you get this spike and you get this crash. Now this crash is exactly what you're feeling at two or three o'clock. You feel like you just have, you, your energy is tanked and that's because you had a spike in your blood sugar earlier in the day and now you're experiencing a lack of uh, energy or um, glucose in your blood that your body is converting into energy. So what we need to do is we need to eat foods with fiber and protein and fats. This is sounding really similar to my tips on how to prevent eating a gigantic lunch that makes you really, really tired, um, but it has a lot of similar principles. What happens in the body is proteins and fats get absorbed, get digested and absorbed much more slowly than carbs and sugar. So if they're getting absorbed less quickly, you're going to get a slower, more uh, mellow, kind of tapered level of um, energy going into your bloodstream and then those blood sugar levels aren't going to spike and then plummet. The other thing is because they're absorbed more slowly you have a sort of a longer period of time that they're getting absorbed for. So again it helps to just peter out that blood sugar level and prevent that blood sugar spike. So the other thing is a lot of people you notice that when you get that blood sugar crash you crave something sweet, something delicious. Um, I call it like a hug from food. You want a bagel or um, you know, a cookie or something like that in the afternoon. Now, it's because your blood sugar has spiked and crashed, and ironically, your body is asking for more carbs in order to get that blood sugar back up again so that you can function. So, again, um, it's tr about trying to have more balanced meals, trying to minimize those carbs that you're eating um, during your lunch, and trying to help balance them out with other things. Something super simple that you can do is just sprinkle chia seeds onto whatever you're eating. Um, that's going to really help to slow down that blood sugar spike in the body. My, um, my next tip for you for how to prevent hitting that wall is really, really interesting. This is what we call our cortisol cycle. Now our cortisol cycle is um, based on our stress hormone cortisol and we basically need it on a daily basis in order to function. Now the normal cortisol cycle looks like this. So you have your morning peak, which is your highest amount of cortisol. This lets you get out of bed in the morning. Then you have a midday peak somewhere around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And if you're not experiencing this midday peak of cortisol, you're probably experiencing that fatigue in the middle of the afternoon. And then again, the cortisol drops off before bedtime. So now I want to show you a picture of abnormal cortisol cycles. So the top, you can have elevated cortisol. It's just high all the time. 
or you can have depleted cortisol and it's just low throughout the day and then it may drop off again before bed. Both of these instances, you won't be getting that midday peak and you will be experiencing that fatigue partway through your day. For both of these situations, you may find you have abdominal weight gain, so weight gain in the tummy area specifically rather than all over the body. You may find um, that you have memory difficulties and that you have, again, trouble sleeping or feelings of fatigue even after a really good night's sleep. And with these people, um, you really do need to seek out naturopathic care. I'd be happy to book you in for an appointment. We can do testing for your cortisol levels, but we can also do a lot of things to treat the cortisol levels, either bring it down and back into that normal rhythm or bring it up again and back into that normal rhythm. And this is gonna allow you to function and cope with your day-to-day um, -day events much, much more effectively. So um, something that you can try doing if you are experiencing that you don't, you don't think that you're getting that second little blip in the middle of the day and you're finding you're getting that fatigue is to try having a quarter teaspoon of salt in a big glass of water about 30 minutes before you typically hit that wall. This is basically um, gonna give your body what it needs to build cortisol. Cortisol is made from salt and among other things. Um, but if giving your body just a little boost of salt in with a lot of water, you don't want to have strong salt water ever. Um, a little bit of salt with, in a lot of water is going to help give it the building blocks it needs in order to produce cortisol and give you that little blip in the middle of the day to help push you through. Now, this isn't a long-term solution, so again, please book an appointment with me and I'd be happy to help rebuild those reserves and get that cortisol cycle back on track. So my final tip for you today about what to do and what to troubleshoot if you're experiencing this wall is to keep hydrated. A lot of us get dehydrated halfway through the day. After lunch, our water intake goes way, way, way down. We're not drinking enough water at work. The reason you may, you may know that you're dehydrated is if you're not urinating frequently. You should be going um, to the washroom between every hour to every two hours, which sounds like a lot for a lot of people. But this may be an indication that you're not drinking enough water if you're not using the washroom at least a couple times uh, between lunch and going home from work. So you need to drink more water, obviously, but how can you do this? I like to keep a mug or a cup on my desk filled with water at all times, and you can take sips throughout the day. Carry a water bottle, stainless steel or glass, please. Carry a water bottle with you throughout the day. Um, you can also set an alarm on your phone to go off once an hour that just, just a little ding or on your computer, just a little ding to remind you, have I drank a glass of water yet? And after you hear that ding, you get used to thinking, oh gosh, I forgot about my water. You can drink your water and then go on with your day. Um, Basically, you do need to get into the habit of drinking more water, and it does take some work. It doesn't come um, super naturally all the time for a lot of people. But if you're dehydrated, it's going to cause a lot of fatigue, especially in the middle of the afternoon, and it's going to make it more difficult for you to get through your day. So, as always, uh, there's a lot of information here, and there's a lot that your naturopathic doctor can do in order to help you uh, deal with some of these stressors or low energy and fatigue that you may have. Of course, as an naturopath, I'm happy to help work with you through anything that's going on in your life, anything from depression and anxiety and acne and pregnancy all the way through to digestive concerns. If there's anything that you're unsure of whether or not a naturopathic doctor can help you with, please send me a message or an email and I'd be happy to let you know whether or not it would be right for you to book an appointment. So you can visit our website here or you can click this link to book an appointment with me and I'd be happy to help you out. Um, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you have a really wonderful week. Take care.